Folks, I want to give you a very important message that I have titled, America Now in the Grip of the Antichrist Spirit. Now, let me give you some scriptures. 1 John 2, 18, verse 22, 1 John 4, 3, 2 John 7. What do those verses have in common? The Apostle John who wrote St. John's Gospel, he wrote the epistles uh, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, and also penned the book of Revelation, is the man who coined a phrase called Antichrist. That's how it's translated in the English translation of the Bible, or Antichristos in Greek. Now, we know that this is a phrase that identifies a spirit of the age, or a spirit that denies the relationship of the Father and the Son, and the spirit that denies that Jesus is the Son of God. But I want to talk to you for a moment about the spirit of Antichrist because the spirit of Antichrist is different than the Antichrist, the man. But it is the spirit of Antichrist that is behind the system or the spirit of Antichrist that is working in the realm of what we're now seeing in the United States of America. It's happening very quickly. It's happening, I'm just to the point that like every week, there's something new that's coming and you say to yourself, this is a manifestation of the spirit of Antichrist. Now, the verse I want to give you is found in Daniel chapter 7 and 25. It's going to come on the screen. And in this particular verse of scripture, uh, this verse was written in the Aramaic language. Uh, as you know, the book of Daniel in the middle of chapter 2 all the way to the latter part of the book uh, the first uh, part of the book and the end of the book are written in Hebrew, but the middle part of the book is written in the Syriac Aramaic language. And so I want to uh, do a word study from this verse, but the verse is coming on the screen right now. And here's what it says. He shall speak great words against the Most High and wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws and they shall be given unto his hand until a time times and dividing a time. Now time is, one, uh, is a, um, a full year, times is two years, and dividing of time is six months. So that's three and a half years or what the book of Revelation identifies as 42 months. Now this phrase here, this verse, would allude to the man who is the Antichrist, a human being who will live on the planet. He arises out of the old territory of the ancient previous uh, empires of prophecy, which would include Babylon, Media, Persia, Greece, and of course, uh, some of the areas of the Roman Empire. He will form a coalition with 10 kings or 10 nations, and he will be a military leader who will eventually be joined by a religious leader whom the book of Revelation identifies as the false prophet. What I want to point out, however, is not so much the man, but the spirit behind the man. Now, let me talk to you for a moment about how to understand this idea about a spirit behind something, all right? Now, in the Bible, uh, in the book of Jude, it talks about people who follow the pattern of Korah and Balaam and Cain. Cain was a man who murdered his brother in the name of a religious offering. Balaam was a compromiser. He was a prophet that compromised for money. And Korah was a man of authority who, who, who resisted the authority of Moses and attempted to overthrow him. So when the Bible talks about, for example, a spirit of Jezebel, there, are, there was a woman in the Old Testament who was a queen, the wife of Ahab, who was a Jezebel. And there was a Jezebel mentioned in the book of Revelation. But the Jezebel spirit is the manifestation that begins to reveal itself through the actions of the, both of those Jezebels. So when I talk about she's under a Jezebel spirit, one Jezebel seduced men in the church sexually. The other uh, Jezebel attacked the prophets of God, beheading them. So the Jezebel spirit tries to behead or cut off the authority that is in the church and replace it with her own setup and her own authority of who she wants in charge. So... That is the idea of the Antichrist spirit. So my point is when you study the verses in the Bible that deal with the Antichrist, the man, it will reveal to you the plot or the strategy of the, of the spirit. Now in, in, in the book of Daniel, where this verse in Daniel chapter seven is found, I'm gonna give you some, some information about that passage I just read. 
it mentions the saints, the saints. He shall wear out the saints. Now, saints is mentioned six times, all in Daniel chapter 7, verse 18, 21, 22, 25, and 27. Don't try to write that down. I'll talk too fast. All right, it's written in the Aramaic. So the word saints here is the word Kadesh, which means a holy person or a holy one. Saints is used in the Torah for Israel, for the nation of Israel when they are in the wilderness in Deuteronomy 33 and verse 2. And it means a godly or merciful person. Saints in Daniel. Now, this is important you hear this because when you read this verse immediately, the mid-trib and post-trib trib people say, look, the church is going through the tribulation because the Antichrist wears out the saints. In Daniel, now this is important you hear this, and this is called hermeneutics of the Bible to rightly divide the word of God. In Daniel, saints refers to Israel and the Jewish people. Now, how do I know that? Because in the book of Daniel chapter nine, where he says 70 weeks are determined for thy people and the holy city, the Jews and Jerusalem. And so all the prophecies that Daniel gave about the time of the end and the Antichrist refer to not the church. The church didn't even exist back then. It refers to the nation of Israel, the Jewish people, and the city of Jerusalem, all right? In the New Testament, when it refers to the word saints and the word saints is used, we see it in the English translation of the Bible or all the translations of the Bible from English, in the English language. The believers or the saints are both Jews and Gentiles who've accepted Christ as Savior. Now, the verse I just read is from the Old Testament, not the New Testament. But notice what it says, and this is very, very important because there's three steps that you see in the book of Daniel and you also see in the book of Revelation that are the steps the Antichrist uses. And so we can say to ourselves that because the Antichrist, the man, uses these three things, these are the three things that the spirit of Antichrist is doing in the United States right now. Ready? Number one is to persecute the righteous. Number two is to make war with the saints or make war with the righteous. And number three is very clear in the book of Daniel is to wear out the saints of the most high God. Now, the first level of the spirit of Antichrist is to bring persecution against anyone who is righteously following God and following the word of God. The word persecution, if you want to know the meaning, it means to flee or pursue. And it actually, in the references, alludes to people that are people of faith being pursued to run away or turn from their faith because of the pressure that they are being put under. In the story of the parable sowing the seed, which is the word of God, there is an area in that verse that talks about how that you are persecuted for the word's sake. Meaning, you're not persecuted just because you say you're a Christian. You are persecuted literally because of how far you will go in being a Christian. How far you will go in preaching righteousness. How far you will go in believing in the power of the Holy Spirit. So think about this for a moment. I want you to think about this. If I were a rationally thinking person that was secular, I would have to say to myself, there must be something about Christianity that a spirit world, if it exists, hates because there is no other religious group persecuted as much on the planet as there are Christians. Christians are martyred, they are beheaded, they are persecuted, they are put in prison. They are targeted first by radical Islamists. And so if you look at Christianity, it is the most persecuted religion on the face of the earth. Now, in the time of the Roman Empire, Christians used these verses to become very passive. They wouldn't protect themselves. They wouldn't a lot of times protect it. They wouldn't defend themselves. Let me say that by force, because here's what it says. If they smite you on one cheek, turn the other cheek. Uh, the soldier said to John, what shall we do? And John said, do no violence to no man. Be happy with your wages. He's talking to soldiers here. Christians would show mercy and kindness to their enemies and endure beatings and persecution, according to St. Augustine. So in other words, in the time of the Roman Empire, the Christians accepted their persecution with, as a badge of honor instead of trying to pray themselves out of it many times or instead of defending themselves or fleeing or resisting, they just sort of endured it. Now, uh, in many nations, you have weapons that are not allowed where a person could defend themselves. It's very important we know that. 
Also, when it comes to persecution, there's jail time, burning homes, kidnapping. Uh, one group kidnapped uh, 300 young girls from a Christian school in Africa. But the attack is against Christians. Now, in the early church, uh, we're told by the historians that some Christians forsook the faith because they had fear of being persecuted. And when an emperor or a leader would come to power that was more tolerant of the Christian religion, they would run back to the church and want to be baptized, rebaptized again and do their first works over because they had forsaken the Lord. So let me just say this. Persecution is what wears a person down. And the intent is to get you to forfeit your authority. Every believer is given a certain level of authority in Scripture and by the power of the Holy Spirit and even in the words of Jesus. All power is given to me both in heaven and in earth. And that Greek word for power there is delegated legal authority. So that authority has been transferred to us through the, for the use uh, of the spiritual kingdom of God and the, uh, the speaking of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In my name you will do all these wonderful things, he said in Mark 16. So to persecute a person is to try to silence them where they do not exercise their prayer authority or their worship authority or speak the word of God publicly, which brings us to the second thing the Antichrist spirit does. He makes war against the saints. And the word war in Aramaic is to approach for a bad purpose. So think about warfare, not a battlefield of guns and bombs and grenades or planes. Think of the, the battlefield as Satan's kingdom and the Antichrist spirit working through people to approach you for a bad purpose. Now in the New Testament, there's three references I want to give you of, in scriptures that deal with making war or what we would call today warfare. James 4 and 1, from whence come cometh wars and fightings among you because of the lust that abideth in you. Then in 1 Peter chapter 2, 11, it, abstain from fleshly lust that war against the soul. And then 2 Corinthians 10 and 4, it mentions here about warfare, but it calls it mental strongholds, the strongholds that are built up in your mind. So when we look at the war that we're battling, because the Antichrist spirit will make war against the saints, what, he do, what this spirit does is it stirs up people in the church against other people and then fighting comes among them. And the Bible plainly tells you that the source of this is lust abiding in you. Ego, pride, position, favoritism, or the feeling of favoritism that you're resisting. All of this is a part of the war. Then the second thing, abstain from fleshly lust that war against the soul. A lot of men have, uh, for example, uh, a difficulty with maybe pornography. There are people of all ages that have difficulty with various types of addictions. And what happens is that the things that the flesh desires that pull at you when you yield to the desires of the flesh that are mentioned in scripture that we should avoid, what happens is they war against the soul. And then you have this battle going on and you go through condemnation. Then you begin to feel a bit depressed and you say to yourself, why did I do that? And you literally have a battle of the mind, a battle of the heart or a battle of the soul by yielding to the flesh in whatever area that fleshly temptation may be. Now in the third area here, it talks about mental strongholds, that's 2 Corinthians 10, 4, that we cast down imaginations that build strongholds in our mind. So the spirit of Antichrist is a spirit that can, in the invisible realm, send darts of the enemy in the form of mental warfare, testing and temptation, to war against you as a believer. This is real spiritual warfare. Now, the third thing that I want to share with you is uh, the thing that uh, Daniel talked about, how that this spirit attempts to do something called to wear out the saints of the Most High God, to wear out the saints. Now, again, we talked to you earlier about the word saints. There has reference to holy ones or called out ones or dedicated ones or righteous people. And wearing down is very interesting because uh, in the text about wearing down, he shall wear out the saints. The word wear out there, you know, you would always think that um, the phrase wear out or being worn out ref ref refers to physical weariness. We'll say, man, I'm so tired from that trip. I'm just wore out. I'm so tired of working today. I'm just wore out. This word, though, in the Aramaic is interesting because it means mentally wearing down. 
So in other words, the wearing down by the spirit of Antichrist is continual bombardment of negative things, con continual bombardment of persecution or as, as the word of the Lord says, passing laws that grieve your spirit. So it wears you down mentally. So when I, when, when I can, uh, or if I can retranslate this, he shall mentally wear out the righteous people on the earth. Now, I have never seen a time, because we're talking here for a moment about the United States, but I have never seen a time when everything you look around you and you look at all forms of media, whether it's um, cable news media, whether it's movies, whether it is newspaper, whether it is magazines, whether it's computer, different forms of social media uh, that are used by iPhones and computers, we see how that there is this uh, culture of if you don't believe the way we do, we ban you. If you don't teach what we want, we uh, report in the newspapers and magazines negative about you. And folks, listen to me. The, the spirit of freedom and the spirit of liberty is being suppressed right now in the United States of America because of the spirit of Antichrist that is attempting to silence the voices of Americans. Uh, and, you know, that's one of the reasons I really believe the Holy Spirit, the book that you've seen us offer on the, on the telecast, I believe one of the reasons that the Holy Spirit inspired me. I'm talking about very heavy inspiration and revelation and putting things together I think the reason the inspiration was so strong is the Lord knew that this spirit of Antichrist was trying to, if you're a conservative Christian, if you're a true flag-waving, God-loving American patriot, if you're just you know someone who believes in the truth of the word, we are under attack by the spirit of Antichrist. And it's like it's hitting us from every direction. And the thing about this spirit, and I want you to listen to me, it's connected with the spirit of hopelessness to where if you're not careful, you will feel like, well, there's nothing we can do. We just have to accept what's coming. Don't be passive the way some of the, you know, if I can say this, the blessed, wonderful Christians in the early church became in the first and second century. They just kind of accepted what happened. They were passive. They, and in, the, in, in their passivity, they ended up in persecution and they ended up being arrested and tortured even in their passivity. You cannot be passive. And you've got to learn from the past. And this is one thing I'm telling you, if there's ever something that is true, a true statement, we do not learn from the past. We go back. I mean, look, communism does not work. And yet we have people in America teaching it in universities, raw communism. You got people that have the head of Stalin and Marx in their offices, in universities, in banks and all these other places. And it's like, dude, this guy has, this system has murdered, you know, tens of millions of people that didn't agree with it, persecuted Christians, made people lose their freedoms. And yet in, in the United States, 40% recently said they agree with socialism and communism. Folks, you haven't learned anything. You don't really know your history. I, I'm sorry to say this to you. You're dumbed down. Somebody has dumbed you down. You need to go back and read some books of what happened starting in 1917 when these systems began to take over. Now, my point again is to not just to get off on that, but to share with you, learn from history. Second Peter 2, 6 through 8. God turned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them to destruction, making them an example for, for those who afterward, down the road, later, would live ungodly and delivered righteous Lot who was oppressed by the filthy conduct of the wicked for that righteous man dwelling among them was tormented or vexed in his righteous soul from day to day, seeing and hearing their lawless deeds. So here's what I want to share with you in that in verse of scripture. Lot was grieved by what he saw every single day, the unrighteousness of the men of Sodom. Also, it says God delivered him because God knows how to deliver the godly and then to reserve those type of people. Speaking of Genesis chapter 19, you can read it unto the day of their judgment because their judgment will come. So I want to say to you that in the in the in the aspect of God knowing how to deliver the godly and God knowing how to deliver the righteous. This is very important to understand. I want to address for about a minute something that's, that a lot of people have asked me questions about. Why are so many good, godly, 
older people uh, passing away. It's like we're in a wave of just thousands of people that ministers and preachers and teachers and older men and women that for different reasons, some of it was the virus, some of it was, you know, other things. It's like there's this season of people passing away. And I want to give you one possibility. There were 10 generations from Adam till Noah, which existed for 1,656 years up to the time of the flood of Noah. If you will read it, all of them lived very long. Methuselah lived to be 969 years of age, but they all died right before the flood came and took the entire earth away. Now, this is not a book that's in, that's in the Bible, but it's a book mentioned in the Bible. And in the 1840s, a, a copy of the scroll was found in a monastery. A British scholar translated it. And it talks in the book of Jasher about the people that died prior to the flood. And I want you to listen to this because to me, it's interesting. Okay. Jasher five and five. And all who followed the Lord died in those days before they saw the evil which God declared upon the earth. Jasher 5 and 6, all the men who follow the Lord died except Methuselah. Now I'm going to say it this way. At times, and, and there's more than this that we can get into, don't have time. God will allow righteous to go so they do not have to see the evil coming on the earth because it would grieve them. If my grandfather, John Bava, and my father, Fred Stone, were still living, still living and he could see what's happening in this nation, from the up to the down, from the top to the bottom, to the side, to the belief, to the moral belief, they would be so grieved. I don't even, I don't even know how they would live with the grieving of their heart and of their spirit. And yet our, this generation won't grieve. They permit it. We're dealing with the spirit of Antichrist and only the preaching of the truth, the power of the Holy Ghost and, and, and the miracle power of God can release us from what we're dealing with. I've got something I want you to get. You've got to get this book. If you love America and you're concerned, you need to read this. I'll be back in a moment. Please give me your undivided attention. Many months ago, I began to hear secular economists announce a new global reset was coming. That's when I heard this phrase in my spirit, the American apocalyptic reset. For several weeks, I woke up early and began receiving a series of stunning prophetic downloads that I penned and now have placed them all in my brand new prophetic book, America's Apocalyptic Reset. This book is a must read for all Christians, for all of those who love Bible prophecy, for conservative Americans and American patriots. The 19 chapters go extremely deep into exposing the agenda now being secretly plotted and to be publicly forced upon us, the American people, and how we can counter it. I discovered some very stunning ancient prophetic parallels and patterns, some that go back 4,000 years that are repeating themselves in the United States right now. I deal with America's great Babel reset and the planned persecution of Christians, America's self-curse that will eventually bring judgment upon the nation, the coming Jezebel clash, the woman who will be president, how should we act and wisely resist corrupt governments, I reveal the unique Silicon Valley parallels and also go into the plans to bankrupt, then reset America economically. Also, I talk about how to function when the church must go underground. I received a very unique revelation concerning President Trump and a pattern that's found in history. There's a chapter also that I deal with how did the prophets get it wrong and so much more. Ladies and gentlemen, this is probably the most significant prophetic book in the history of my ministry, especially in the time that we're in, but that's not all. I'm also including my most recent inside information prophetic briefing on two audio CDs. It's two hours in length, and I will release detailed information that I cannot, and I want you to hear me, I cannot, nor will I, share this on social media or on television, as absolutely in the climate that we're now in, a lot of this information would be targeted for being blocked and banned if it was made public and not done in this private setting that we're doing it in. These two hours contain biblical, political, national, and international revelation and information that I am sure that many of you have not been aware of. It is for truth lovers only. I want you to order right now this prophetic resource package, my brand new book, The Apocalyptic Reset, and the two-hour prophetic CDs by going online at perrystone.org or calling 1-888-21-BREAD or write me at Perry Stone P.O. Box 3595, Cleveland, Tennessee, 37320. Now, we're making this available for your donation of $35 or more, and you can request the offer APR-140. That's APR-140. I'm going to unmask 
the radical globalists and individuals who have set out to oppose and silence Christians, silence patriots, and shut the mouth of conservatives. And we will show you in the book what we can do when we unite together. We are looking forward to getting this into your hands. Wow, thank you for joining me. Now, as far as we know at this point, this is the final opportunity to get the book and the CD because we will change to a brand new prophetic offer next week. So please, this is the time for you to make that call or contact our office. And I do appreciate those of you that have read the material and the comments that you've made. You know, we do not always know what's going to happen next year or next week. I think this is why James said, if you make a plan, say, Lord willing. Well, the Lord willing, next March, at the end of March, we will have a big Warrior Fest here in Cleveland, Tennessee, which is one of our big youth gatherings. We will also have one in the month of July, a fall, I'm sorry, a spring and a summer one. We will also be planning our International Prophetic Summit in the month of June and our main, our main event in October. Now we're speaking of next year, of course. We also have some plans, and Pam and I have been working on this, and we'll let you know the first of the year to have a 40-year uh, marriage anniversary celebration. We'll be married 40 years and invite a lot of you to, we're not sure where we're gonna have it. It could be Florida, it could be Pigeon Forge, but we're gonna try to have uh, several hundred of you who are close friends and even those of you that are partners of the ministry or those of you who just wanna attend and be a part of it to join us at a marriage celebration and a big dinner and a, a, just a great time of fellowship together. And that will probably be around the first, second, third of April of next year. Uh, I'm going to be coming to Florida next year and ministering. I'm going to be coming to uh, South Carolina to minister next year. We're already booking some uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday meetings for next year. And so the Lord willing, uh, should there not be, and, and you all know what I'm saying when I say this, should there not be lockdowns or limitations of meetings or so on, we plan on coming to a lot of areas next year. Now, uh, I got a schedule uh, for many years. I was in, involved with the schedule that honestly, physically just about took me out. It just put me uh, put me almost where I couldn't even function. So my wife has forbid me to do as many meetings <clears throat> as I've done in the past, but we are coming and we're selecting areas. We're praying about where to come. Now, the Lord willing, if nothing happens, uh, on November 7th through the 10th, I'm coming to King's Chapel in Maui, Maui in Hawaii. And also I'm coming to King's Chapel East, uh, November 12th, 13th, and 14th, which is in Honolulu, Hawaii. Now, perrystone.org is our website. If you want to know where our conferences are going to be, go there, look it up. Also, many of you don't know this, we have a major online store at perrystone.org. We have hundreds of CDs, hundreds of books, hundreds of sing uh, single CDs, all sorts of resource material on every subject imaginable. And I want you to check it out because we have to keep you informed and this is one of the best ways to do it. We also have downloads available. Thank you so much. I'll see you next week.